As you know, the world is constantly evolving, as is the world of marketing. It's evolving right along with it because humans are evolving, right? And it might seem a little bit scary to kind of be working on something and then have things change all the time. But the good news is that change is not usually a bad thing, especially when it comes to marketing. It just means we're getting a little bit more human and a little bit closer to finding the people who we are here to serve. If you think about it, marketing back in the day was just so general. It was kind of a spray and pray approach. Whether it was in a magazine or newspaper or on commercials, it was kind of like one size fits all. And you hope to catch the attention of the people who are looking for your product. Now it is getting so specific and we have so much data that we're able to find the people who need us the most the fastest we've ever been able to do before. What does that look like for us as marketers in 2023 and 2024 and even beyond? And what are some things we can do today to start tapping in on these trends? I'm Kathy Olson of Funnel Gorgeous and let's dive in. I'm gonna share with you the five top trends and tips in marketing your product online for 2023. Let's go. Just really quickly a disclaimer, if at any time you're getting confused or you're feeling overwhelmed because of the tech, Stay tuned, make sure you listen all the way to the end. I'm gonna introduce a tool to you that is gonna help you implement all five of these in your business, super easy. Okay, so trend number one is hyper niched program content. Gone are the days of the 101, 102, where you kind of teach all of the things, right? And it's gonna be, you know, 20 modules, and it's everything you ever needed to know about a certain topic. Definitely gone. That trend is way out of style at this point. People are much more interested in picking and choosing and actually choosing solutions that are hyper-focused towards them, their situation, where they are in life, so that the content is really more personalized to them. In order to do this, you're going to want to collect data on your customers as much as possible. And I love doing this by just actually opening up lines of communication and understanding what they're struggling with, where they are in life, kind of really diving into who your person is and how you can serve them better. But then even breaking down the problem that you solve into smaller pieces as well, which could mean that you have five different courses on different things within a topic versus one mega course. And they are allowed to pick and choose from your five courses, or maybe they take course number one, then course two, then course three, and so on. But the idea is this hyper niche version is gonna be more customized. It's gonna get down deeper into the nitty gritty. It's gonna be smaller, easier to get in and get out, and usually less expensive, so they can start to kind of collect these versus all this information, and they might only use like 20% of it. There's definitely a downside to value when you stack too much and it's too generalized because then they assume it is going to be a lot of information that they are just going to ignore and they don't want to pay for that. The added benefit of this is when your program is hyper niche like that, it is super duper easy to market because you know exactly who you're talking to, exactly what you're solving, exactly fast, and it makes it so much easier to sell. That brings us to trend number two, which is real talk versus the pro talk or professional talk. And so I don't really mean slang, but I do mean the way that actually people speak about their problems, what kind of questions they ask around their problems versus your curse of knowledge and you knowing everything there is or, you know, the kind of legalese that you're speaking. There's been a rise in obviously voice search. So a lot of people search via voice on their phone their computers, through smart devices, all that kind of stuff. More than ever, search terms are actually becoming the way people speak and not even really necessarily the way they type. So not even just from an SEO standpoint, but from a, they get me, they understand me, they kind of talk my language point, it's gonna connect to people much faster. And so you wanna use this real talk everywhere, on your website, on your funnels, in your emails, on your social, in your videos, right? <laughs> Talking, in your audio podcast, right? You're gonna wanna use this real talk that your real customers and clients are using versus your pro talk. This might mean longer tail keywords type things, or it could mean more hyper niche, just like a last one. But the idea is that you really want to understand how your 
ideal clients speak and so that you can speak right back to them that same exact language that they're using. You can easily do this by creating a copy bank of words that people use. You can check actual SEO and search terms, YouTube being a very great one and easy and free, but you really want to listen to the way people are speaking, even in videos, IG, TikTok, all those, what words are they using and what kind of keywords are the machines pulling from the way that people are speaking. The third trend might make a lot of sense now that you've heard me say one and two, and it is giving really great examples and actually proving your theory. So when you're marketing, when you're writing an email, when you're doing social, always, always, always use an example after you make a point. So for example, if you are telling a client how to make their emails open easier, right? Like let's say you're teaching that, then show an example of a type of business or industry, what emails they would be writing, and maybe actually even showing different headlines and showing percentages of which ones got opened and which ones didn't. You can easily say, oh, short headlines get open versus long headlines, but what's an example of that? Show us a very punchy, short, headline that got opened way more than the long one and actually show the numbers. Even though this is a simple step, it is extremely powerful in reaching people so that they can understand these concepts and really soak it in to go, okay, now I know what you mean. Don't ever assume people know what you mean. Always, always give examples. Again, do this in social, do this on emails, do this on your website, do it in sales funnels, all of the places. The fourth one is kind of fun, but it's like it's like this retro <laughs> resurgence. And it is this resurgence of emails and newsletters. So it's very interesting, but it seems like people are kind of overwhelmed with social media. Social is coming at us in all directions, whether it is podcasting, videos, posts, all the things, right? There's actually been a huge uptick in people actually <laughs> opening emails and reading emails and clicking from emails. Emails still to this day are our biggest moneymaker along with pretty much every other market that we know. So even though this is an old trend, it is having a resurgence. It's having a moment of, okay, cool, Remember, don't lose focus, that emails are still king, that newsletters are still king, that our list is still king. Even though there's all these shiny, fun things on social media, it's all about that list. It still is all about that list, and it's going to be all about that list for a long time to come. And P.S. If you want to know more about building your email list, check out this video that Julie made all about creating your email list from scratch. And last thing I want to say about that is that just because it is old school, email is kind of old school at this point and newsletters are old school, doesn't mean we can't create really fun, engaging, interactive pieces to it. We can always include videos. We can always include, you know, our podcast. We can always include our audio, our blog post, whatever it is, right? We can always include other things in that email. Just know that people are actually paying attention to their inboxes a lot more now. Okay, that brings us to number five, rounding it all out, and that is implementing automations, smart automations into your marketing. And actually this will help you bring all of these trends together as well as really bringing everything you do together. So what is an automation? An automation is really just one thing that triggers something else and does it automatically, you know, hopefully without you. That's kind of the point is to try to do it without you. So it is automated so that you're not actually sitting at the computer pulling all the strings and, <laughs> and doing pulling all the levers and pushing all the buttons. So automations usually have a trigger, an event, Event that kind of happens that triggers them and then it does something else. Sometimes this is called if this then that. So if this happens, then this will happen, then that will happen, right? So a very simple example of this would be you sign up to get a free download. It kicks off the download, gets sent to your inbox, you open it and you have it, right? But it's an automatic trigger, it's an automation. So that's a very simplified version of it, but they can get extremely complicated, but like cool complicated, like magic like complicated. So much to the fact that it could be your whole customer management system can be automated. So basically you bring in a lead, they get sent this based on their behaviors, they can trigger other things. They can trigger a getting text message from reminders. They can trigger getting emails. They can trigger links going to another page. And when they go to that page, that triggers something else, right? And so they kind of are getting this personalized experience, really like choose your adventure as they go through. And 
this is all created by using automation so that there's no one that actually physically has to be there. Everything's on demand when they want it, when they're actually taking the action and it's right there just in time to talk to them in that moment. Automations, you no, usually have to have some sort of a software that will run this, but good news. Like I said in the beginning, all five of the things I talked about today, you can use one tool that brings it all together, especially the automations, <laughs> because we actually have automations pre-built. It takes a little bit of setup to start them, but we have tutorials on all that. So what is this amazing tool that I keep talking about or keep alluding to? It is our software, FG Funnels. The idea is by automating these different marketing processes, you can really improve the efficiency of your marketing, increase your ROI. Like I said, get in front of people right at the right time, right when they're taking action. And so that they don't have to wait for someone to manually email them or to send them a link or to check in on them or follow up or any of that stuff. So if these things sound fun and awesome to you, but you are a little bit scared of tech, you can go get a free demo of the software. We actually have a human that you can book a call with <laughs> and they will walk you through, or you can always check out our videos too. You can check this all out at fgfunnels.com and we can help you more from there. So what did you think? Which of these five trends are you going to implement or which ones are you already implementing? Which ones were you like, oh, I already got that. I'm already ahead of the game. Let us know in the comments below and also make sure to keep these different trends in mind. Know that customization is king, hyper niched, really speaking the language, being there when people need you. All of these things are really all about taking better care of our people. And when marketing is all about taking care of people, it's super fun and it never feels scammy. It's truly the way to market with heart. And if you want to know more about how FG Funnels can help your business, check out the video that just popped up on your screen to learn more. All right. Thanks guys. See you next week.